is Chrissy from the Chattanooga Public Library. And for today's video, we are going to be focusing on facing adversity, how to deal with adversity and power through the hardest times in life. Everyone has a bad day now and then, and most of the time we can take a deep breath and just keep going. But what happens when we meet an obstacle in life that we are not sure we can overcome? Just as paying taxes and loss are unavoidable elements of life, just ask any adult about the tax one, so is adversity. But adversity doesn't always look like the big moments in life. The truth is, at some points in time, we are all faced with extraordinary challenges. It's just a part of life. But just because we all have these moments does not mean that these challenges are unimportant, life-altering, or insignificant. Quite the opposite, actually. These moments are the points in life that will shift and alter your worldview, life experiences, and prepare you for the future. The weird thing is, the hardest times don't always have to be a negative experience. In fact, dealing with adversity can become a very positive and nourishing experience that can lead to massive growth and development. But before we get to that, let's first dissect a couple of things about adversity. What is adversity? Merriam-Webster defines adversity as a state or instance of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. Now, remember when I talked about the big things in life a few minutes ago? Taxes and loss? Well, facing adversity doesn't always come in the form of monumental obstacles. It could potentially look like a breakup or, or losing a pet, or maybe not making a sports team or landing the role in the school play you wanted. These moments of adversity are just as valid because it's all about how you see the obstacle, not how other people see your obstacle. So how do you respond to adversity? Well, this is gonna look very different for every single person on the planet. What we do know is that responding to adversity is kind of like a practice. For example, let's think about math. When you're learning math, you first have to learn numbers and then how to add and subtract. Then maybe you can move on to multiplication and division. And you know, eventually you're gonna lead to calculus, but you can't start at calculus. Each skill builds on itself and you have to have an understanding of each one of those steps. So the last element that we're going to dissect is the status quo. Status quo literally translates to the state in which from Latin. But if we want a more concrete definition, it means basically the existing state of affairs. So with that being said, any time that we deal with some sort of adversity or obstacle in life, the status quo changes. Which, that doesn't mean that the status quo is always going to be bad, just that it's always changing throughout your life. So now that we have some key definitions about adversity, let's hear from a couple of our library staff about specific moments of adversity in their life and how they faced those moments. Hello, I am Rinda from the Chattanooga Public Library. Uh, today I wanted to talk about perseverance in the face of adversity and what that has looked like in my life. So my whole life I have been a fairly stubborn person. I had developed kind of differing levels of perseverance when it came to different sorts of adversity that I faced, whether it be physical or psychological, or even um, having to do with family issues. Through a somewhat um, turbulent upbringing and adolescence, I was diagnosed along with my sister with a rare neuromuscular disease called Friedreich's ataxia, which is progressive and there is no cure or medicine. Um, so I was 22 when I got diagnosed, and my sister was 18. I am the oldest of my three siblings, which puts me in a position to serve as kind of an example to them for how they should handle things, and um, I have to kind of model what kind of adult one must be, I guess, to survive well, because they look to me and they see themselves when they're older especially my sister, you know, um, because my sister and I have the same rare disease, we don't really know anyone else who has what we have or who is going through what we are. So being that I'm four years older and our disease is progressive, she kind of looks to me to see what she's going to be like in four years. You know, she looks to me to see, um, am I going to be sad? 
Am I going to still be an independent adult? Uh, will I survive how people treat me differently? Will I survive losing my physical mobility? Um, can I still be happy after all of this? So she looks to me to answer those questions and I answer them in my physical lifestyle uh, and the way that I speak and carry myself and whether or not I persevere well through this adversity. And so here are some answers to the question, how do I develop perseverance in the face of such adversity and the face of painful things? First, I would say what's super important is to find meaning in your struggle, which sounds kind of silly, but regardless of personal belief, you're capable of finding meaning in what you're going through. And what that means is um, look at the pain that you're dealing with. Like for me, look at this disability with no cure that I have. And I have to ask myself, what can this experience help? to create in me, within me? What can it generate within me? Rather than what does it take away? What does it give me? And what could it give the people I love? Um, so for instance, in this, it's the ability to survive. That's what it's kind of developed in me. And so that strength that it's given me, I then take and give to my sister. I've even spoken to classes of psychology students learning how they can be therapists to people who are coping with progressive illness. Um, and so doing all those things also adds incredible meaning to my life and gives purpose to my pain. Another, you've got to be able to face pain and adversity head on. You've got to be able to look it in the face and not look away and not pretend it's not there. You have to be able to let yourself have very bad days with it because you're going to have sad days. You're not going to feel good because surprise, you're going through something very hard. So it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows. You're going to be sad. But a person who survives things like this lets themselves feel sad. And because they've allowed themselves to recognize how they feel and the pain that they're putting up with, they're able to then take care of themselves and also push past it. Um, but as long as you're pretending the pain's not there, and as long as you're avoiding your feelings, you're never going to work past it. You're basically hitting the pause button on being upset, and it's all going to come back to you one day when you had to work through it. So don't hit pause. Let it play through. And finally, you have got to have a sense of humor. You've got to, okay? Um, my sister and I even went so far as to make a series of comedy sketch videos just about being siblings who are also in scooters. Um, that was super fun to do. She's even done stand-up about it, or as I call it, sit down because she is sitting. You know, if we can't laugh about it, how are we going to survive it? Thanks. Hey, I'm Mamie. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about adversity and dealing with change and loss um, and my personal experiences with going through that and um, how I personally have learned to cope with it. A couple of years ago, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and it was um, a really aggressive and quickly spreading cancer. And so it was kind of a shock. It was like she went from being healthy to um, being really, really sick in the matter of just a few months. And um, I felt hopeless. I was really scared. Um, and I just wasn't sure what to do or how to, how to get through it. I remember um, researching at the library books on uh, grieving and books on cancer. And when I was looking at books on grieving, I remember seeing a statistic that was kind of, um, it was surprising to me. And it was that some low 
percentage of people, um, something like 30, 30 something, I don't quite remember, um, but that percentage of people go through the grief process and then have a difficult time getting out of it. Um, so they might remain depressed. And I remember reading that and <laughs> I was really um, surprised. I, it had never occurred to me that a person could experience loss and go through the grief process um, and go through that kind of change and heal from it. Um, I just, I thought, <laughs> I, I guess I didn't give the natural grief process enough credit. Um, and that's not to say that it's wrong to continue to feel bad after you go through that. Um, I just didn't know that there was a possibility that you could um, go through that kind of process and um, and feel better at the end. And so that was a mental shift for me. I was kind of thinking, how am I going to deal with this? And how am I going to cope with it in a way that's healthy and that supports me? And a couple of things uh, were very helpful for me. So I wanted to just talk about those today. Um, we're all going through grief and loss and change and adversity with the pandemic. So maybe these things could be helpful. The first thing that I focused on when I was going through um, these feelings with my mom's illness uh, was journaling or just really just expressing my feelings, acknowledging them and getting them out of my brain. So that is one good way. And then the other is treating yourself with compassion. And that can be really hard, especially when you don't feel good, um, when you're feeling sad or uncertain, anxious. It can be hard to do those little things that make us feel good. Um, so it helps me to think of um, just maybe somebody that I admire or uh, someone I look up to, someone who is wise, <laughs> um, and think, what would their advice be to me? Uh, it probably wouldn't be like my first impulse is to eat junk food. <laughs> um, and that doesn't really help me, though. You know, I might feel better for a second, but it, it doesn't long term benefit me. So what would they suggest? You know, maybe it's getting more sleep or maybe it's drinking some water or writing about my day. Um, so it can be helpful to kind of um, think of it from somebody else's perspective. Um, that always helps me. So I hope that that helped. And thank you for watching.